Hi everybody, it's Jennifer from Farmfish Fabrics here. Today we're going to talk about binding. And we're going to show you how to put binding on a quilt, or in our case, we're working on this charming table topper that we just did a tutorial for. Um, and this, in case you can see, this has odd angles. Um, there's 135 degree angles here, plus 90 degree angles. Also, we're going to show you how to join your ends of your binding. And again, this works not just for this table topper, but also for a regular quilt. Um, I cut my strips at two and a half inches wide. Um, some people cut them at two and a quarter, some people cut them at two. Do what you like. I'm going off two and a half inches today. So let's get started. Um, cut your two and a half inch strips that you're gonna need for whatever piece you're working on and we will show you how to do this. Okay, so first you're gonna take two strips, your two and a half inch strips. You're gonna lay one of them on top of the other one like this. And we are going to sew a line from this corner to this corner. So right like that. So you're going to have your two strips laying perpendicular to each other. And you're going to sew, I'm going to zoom in right there, you're going to sew from this corner up here down to this corner. Um, you can mark it if you want. There's rulers that you can cut it before you sew it. Um, I've done this enough that I don't need to mark it, but you could mark it from this corner down to this corner where they meet. If mine are plain white or plain off white strips, if yours are, you know, printed, you want to make sure you have your right sides together for this part. So this here would be your wrong side and this would be your right side sticking up. And then once you have it sewn and you flip it up like this, you get a perfect 45 degree angle. So I usually like to double check that I'm good and it looks really nice. And then I will cut off that excess right there with a quarter inch, uh, leave about a quarter inch seam allowance on the strip. And then um, you'll do that for as many strips as you need to put together. And after you've sewed your strips together, then you're going to want to take your strip to the ironing board and you're going to iron it in half. Um, again, mine is a solid, so it doesn't really have a right or a wrong side, but you know, you would iron it, press it in half so that your wrong sides are together. So this would be the pretty side on the outside if it would be printed. Um, and you're going to do that to your whole long strip. Go ahead and get that ready and then we're going to get ready to put it onto our project. Okay, and once you have your binding strips all cut ready to go, here's what we're going to do. Um, now this end of our, of our um, table runner is a 90 degree angle. Even though it's, you know, set on point, this is still a 90 degree angle. Just like a regular quilt angle would be. Um, so I'm not going to mark this one. You could if you want. If you're new to binding, you could always mark this corner like we're going to do our other corners, but I'm not going to. Um, our corners here, try to get this zoomed in but so that you can still see it here. Um, our corners here are 135 degree angles. Now this right here is um, called the angle finder. Um, it's a creative grids template. I don't know if you can see it very good there. You can actually use this to cut and mark and everything on your bindings. I will show this to you in a different video. Right now I want to show you how to do this without any special tools. But there is a tool available called um, the Angle Finder by Creative Grids if you're interested. Um, again, there's instructions for here. You can, use, you can watch some YouTube videos on this. But this will help you to do 60 degree, 120 degree, 135 degree, and your regular 90 degree angles um, inside and outside. So it's great if you have some pointy shapes that kind of jut in. Um, you know, if you need to put binding on like on an inside angle like there. Um, but anyway, right now, what we're going to do is, um, again, let me see if I can move this in. I have it zoomed in so hopefully you can see this. We are going to, this is just a friction pen that erases with heat. Um, you can just, you know, you could use a piece of chalk, you could do whatever. So what we're going to do, we're sewing your binding on with a quarter inch seam. So we're going to just mark off um, about an inch worth of marking here at the corner at our angle, coming from both directions. So you'll just line up your quarter inch uh, mark on your ruler. And like I said, probably about an inch of a mark. You probably don't even need that much, but we will do that much for there. And our goal here is at this intersection where our points meet, that is where we want our binding or our machine needle to stop sewing right there, um, right at that point. Now, the tricky part is um, we're, this is going to be covered up 
by our binding as we're sewing. So our binding is going to be on top. So what I usually do is when my binding is in place there, I will kind of put a pin through under here to mark it there just so you can see it. Um, again, I don't like, you don't want to mark the binding itself because sometimes your binding moves a little bit as we're sewing and we want this to be pretty accurate right here. So I will probably put a pin kind of coming out at, so that it comes out through that point there, but that my pin covers the um, corner of my table runner or whatever you're working on. So again, you'll, you'll kind of be able to see the point there and you'll know when you get close to there, you can lift up your binding and kind of check it. You're sewing and just take, take it really slow when you get to that corner there. And you will actually stop sewing at that point where your intersections meet and kind of we'll, we'll maneuver it then. So first what we're going to do before we go over to the machine, we're going to mark all of our angles all of our odd angles. I'm not going to mark the 90 degree angles. You could, again, if you would want to. Um, you know, if you've never, like I said, if you've never put binding on before, you know, you can mark these the same way. It's the same concept. It just, you know, typically we don't mark the 90 degree ones because they're a little bit easier to do. So again, I'm just going to come in from both angles here and mark quarter inch mark about an inch long just so you can kind of see it and again that point where our um, lines intersect is going to be your stopping point so I will put a pin into there just so I can kind of see my mark as I'm sewing um, again we'll do we have four 90 degree angles here now this one is black on black but I'm still gonna um, I do have a lighter colored pen but I'm lazy so we're just gonna mark this one so you probably won't be able to see this one at all um, I'll be able to see it a little bit as I'm sewing so it's okay. Um, so I'm going to mark this one here. And again, oops, my fabric slipped there. You want to be careful to make sure as you're marking it, you're not pulling your fabric up from where it's supposed to be, like I just did there. And then I will just put my pin right through there, coming out at the point. And one more angle on the other side here. This last side here, same thing. And no matter what your angle shape is, like, so these are 135, you know, your common angles are what's in this ruler, 135, 120, um, obviously 90 degree angle. Um, you would do the same thing, no matter what your angle is. Now, if you're doing an inside angle, there's a little bit more of a trick to this, so we're not, that's not covered in this video. This is just your outside angles, not your, again, your inside angles would be if you're binding something, like this was your piece where my fingers are, and you're binding it here. That's a whole different, it's, it's not almost the same way, but you have to trim off a little excess fabric when you do it that way. Um, that'll be a different video. All right, so again, we marked this here, and we're going to stop sewing right at that intersection line there where our points line up. And like I said, you could, if you would want to, and you're new to this, you can mark your 90 degree angle the same way you draw a line and draw a line, and you'll stop sewing right where that intersection is. Um, I'm not going to, but you could, all right? And you would do it the same way as what we're doing the rest of them. All right, all right so now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. Um, and just one other tip, if you've not done this, you know, a lot of you have made quilts so you know, but if you're new to this whole binding thing, you typically will sew your binding on the front and flip it over to the back and either hand sew it in place or machine sew it in place. Um, usually if you're going to machine sew it, um, you usually will actually sew it on the back first and flip it to the front. It's a little easier that way. Um, I am going to do it the little harder way. It can be done both ways. Um, I'm going to sew mine to the front and I am going to machine stitch it from the front side, it just requires you to put in some extra pins in there. There's a lot of YouTube videos on that. It takes a little bit of practice um, to do, but I want my front to look great. And my philosophy is nobody actually looks at the back too much. I said, if you're gonna machine sew it, and you don't have a lot of practice, you're gonna wanna do the same thing as what I just did, but you'll mark your back side and you'll sew it to your back first. All right, so let's go over to the machine and we'll go from there. Okay, so what we wanna do first, I usually put a pin here about 12 inches um, from where I'm going to actually start sewing and I also leave about a 12 inch tail. So we're going to have a 12 inch tail hanging here and mark a pin here about 12 inches from where we're going to start sewing. So here's where I'm going to start and I pin this in place here. And again, if you've never done this before, 
um, you line up your raw edges that are folded with the raw edge of your fabric and we're going to sew a quarter inch um, and we're going to put this in place here and you don't have to back stitch or anything I mean some people do it doesn't hurt if you do I usually don't um, so we're going to go ahead and put this in place and just sew and this is just a straight line here for a while and so a quarter inch you want to make sure you're not pulling your fabric you're not pulling your um, binding that you just have it laid out nice and even with it and just kind of lay it in place don't pull anything you know some people sew this on with a walking foot which helps you kind of keep everything to feed evenly my problem right now is my binding is twisted so you're just gonna go ahead and sew this at a quarter inch and you'll sew the whole way down to where we have this marked here um, this is where we're aiming to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and sew until I get almost close to there and then we'll start videotaping again. We're coming in really close to where we want to stop. So where we want to stop is down here at this mark. So I'm going to go and I'm going to sew really slow, keeping my quarter inch distance and just kind of, you know, you can feel where the pin is actually. My pin is right where my finger is. So I'm going to sew until I get really close to there and if you want you can lift this up you can look I still have a little bit of ways to go um, let's take one more stitch here and call it good alright so we're gonna put our needle up now and lift our presser foot up I'm doing this backwards so it's a little odd okay we're gonna pull this out now and I might just trim this off you can leave your threads in you can back stitch here if you want to it kind of help, helps to keep it in place but you're gonna move your piece of fabric so that is now gonna be um, perpendicular to where you're sewing. Your stitching stop right at your point which is right underneath where where my thumb is right there and you're gonna flip this uh, binding up so that it comes in an even line with the rest of your piece here. Move it over here. Flip it up so that your binding is now in an even line with the rest of your piece. So essentially that corner your fold and your binding is going to be right at the corner of your piece and that's perfect and then what you're going to do is just very carefully um, you can finger press that like that you're very good carefully what I usually do you don't have to do this but I'm going to do it it makes it a little easier if we put a pin right here at the corner and you want your pin to come like straight across so your pin is going to be like in a 90 degree angle to your fabric here that's just to kind of help but keep it in place and you're going to then fold your binding back down so it's straight so if we were good if we we're good here this now your fold of your binding is going to form a 90 degree angle with how we're going to sew and this corner right here where your fold is on your binding should be at the corner of your project and it is and you're going to fold it right down like that you're going to take it underneath your machine and you're going to just start sewing right from where it's folded. So we're going to sew. That's all you got to do. That corner's done. We're going to sew down until we get to our 90 degree corner. Here, which is really much short side now. So it's not too long until we get there. So again, just kind of make sure your binding is nice and even with the side. We're sewing in a quarter inch seam here. Now remember, we didn't mark our... Uh, we didn't mark our corner of our 90 degree side, so what I usually do, if I can find, oops, I think I bumped the camera here. If I can find a ruler, I'm just going to take a pin and find my quarter inch, which I think is right here. And I'm just going to take a pin and just stick it in there for a mark. Um, so I will know to stop sewing right when I get to that pin. Um, sometimes you have to be careful to rearrange your pin right there where it goes over that metal hump of your machine um, but other than that you know just kind of make sure that's straight keep your eye on where the pin is and you're gonna sew real carefully till there like I said if you want to you could back stitch here to make sure it stays in place some people also sew at a 90 degree angle or whatever your angle might be to the corner of your piece I kinda just stop whoops just stop sewing and call it good so we're gonna lift our needle we're gonna fold it to a 90 degree angle like this and your goal is to get your fold of your binding right here at the corner of your piece and when it's folded over binding should now run in a straight line with your rest of your piece so if you see here I have a straight line through here um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this a little bit more situated and then what you do is you flip your binding 
over to come to the other direction. I usually like to keep my finger right here at the corner. And so now your fold, I'm just gonna put a pin here just so I can lift it up without it moving too much. Um, all right, so your binding is gonna be parallel to this bottom edge here. Your fold should be right there at parallel to this side. And again, this is for a 90 degree corner, which is like your regular quilt, um, your regular quilt side. And we're gonna rotate this around here, pull that pin out, and you're gonna start sewing right at the edge of your fabric. And just make sure everything is lined up here. And we're gonna sew and move my pin out of the way. And again, this is a short side, so we'll soon be at the other 135 degree, our odd size angle. So we're just going to go ahead and sew this. So we're going to sew. Again, we have the spot marked. Um, it's hard to see. You know, we can feel the pin mark. It gets a little trickier to kind of see it once we're at the... I and mean, what you could also do is you know that you're going to sew till right here. So you could put a pin in coming out at this angle so you can kind of see it better. That would be a lot more helpful. Um... So we are sewing until we get to that spot. And I just go nice and steady. One more stitch here will do. Like I said, you could back stitch if you wanted to. Maybe we'll just do two on this one. Lift your needle up. Take your marker pins out there. Um, we're going to take this off. Again, you can leave your thread and not cut it. I'm just going to pull it out a little bit more so you can see it better. So we should have stopped right at that seam line, which we did. We're going to rotate this so that it's now running um, even with us here. So straight, like if you're sitting here, it's a little bit angled on the camera, but it's straight in front of me, you know, to my side. And we're going to flip this up. And it should stop at the stitching. And we're going to flip it up straight um, so that this binding now runs in a straight line with our piece here. All right. And at the you can put your pin right there at the corner of your piece, which should be where your binding is folded. And we're going to now flip our binding down over that pin and put it down. So now our binding is even with this side that we're sewing. Um, it's folded right at that pin mark, which is right at the corner of our piece. Um, hopefully, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, so it's folded right there. And this is our corner. And we are perfect now, hopefully. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put this underneath the machine. Make sure everything's lined up good here. And, okay. We're going to come down. We're going to start sewing. Now, this is our long edge here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and sew. You're going to do the other corners the same way as we did these three. And I will come back and show you how to meet up your ends when we're all finished. Okay, so we're coming up here on our final side. Remember we marked that pin at the beginning where we started, um, actually we marked it, we started 12 inches, about 12 inches down from the pin. Um, so we're gonna sew right about to that pin. We're gonna lift this up, pull this out the whole way. All right, now here's where, there's a million different ways, okay, not quite a million, of doing this. Um, here's how I join my ends. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we stopped, we have about a 12 inch gap between our, where we started and where we stopped. All right, and that's, you don't need to quite have that big of a spot. I like to have 12, it kinda keeps you, you know, it gives you enough room to play with. And this is whether I do a quilt or a table topper like this. All right, so what we're gonna do, and this is just how I do it. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's no, real no right or wrong ways, it's just how I do it. So I usually will just eyeball about the middle of my opening and just put a pin in it. That's just to mark it. You don't have to put the pin in. I just do it because it kind of gives me a visual reference as to where about my middle is. And I'm going to flip. First of all, you want to make sure that you have enough overlap. Sometimes you come up a little short in your quilt. Um, we have plenty, so we're good. All right. So that's your first thing is double check that you have enough overlap from both sides. Because you could always adjust this if you if this piece is really short here you're obviously going to need to come down closer to here but we're good all right so what i do and don't be scared all right there's nothing to be scared about we're actually just cutting um i will cut this one off here right about where that pin is and you want to try to cut it straight up and down all right again the pin i'm a little off from the pin but we're good so you're going to cut this first piece here now don't throw the piece you cut off all right this is going to be our measuring stick 
I mean, you could get a ruler out, but we're just going to use this for a measuring stick. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the other side, make sure this is laying, make sure this right side that we cut is laying nice and straight where it's going to go. Lay our left hand side over top. Make sure that's nice and straight too. I'm going to lay this on top right here. And I'm going to draw a line. Usually I actually don't draw a line. I just cut. But we're going to draw a line just for the camera. Draw a line on this side of our strip here. Again, you could use a tape measure um, or a ruler. This was cut at two and a half inches wide. So my space between here where it overlaps to here is two and a half inches. All right. If yours was cut at two and a quarter, this would be two and a quarter. Um, this line that we drew, so again, here's where this one ended, and we drew an overlap. So I'm going to move this up just so you can see it here. So we are going to, we want to overlap by that two and a half inches, all right, or whatever your strip is cut at. And I drew this line here. Now, usually I will cut this a little shy of the line, meaning I won't quite cut right on the line. I'm going to cut a little bit over this way, so my piece is just a little bit shorter. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just hack this off right there on the line. And now this is all extra. And what you do, and this is where, you know, again, it takes a little practice. You probably will sew, if you've never done this before, you probably will sew something um, upside down. All right. This is how I remember it. So we have two strips here, um, a left and right. I put my right side and this would be easier to see too if I had printed fabric. Mine is solid again, so I don't really, you can't see the difference, but you know, you'll do it. So follow me here. I'm going to take my right side. I'm going to just move it right side up, up, up. So my right is going to go right side up and up. So I didn't twist it. I just merely opened it up and moved it up. All right. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to take my right hand side, put it right side up and up. And then I'm going to take my left hand side, which is right here, and here's where you have to kind of crinkle your quilt together a little bit to make it work. I'm just going to open this up and just take it over. So my left hand side is going to be straight over like this. So it will be like this, and it kind of gets a little tricky here um, to get it. And then I will take some pins, and I mean you can pin it straight. Usually I will pin it like this and like this and we are going to sew let me move this so it stops moving around for you so our right is right side up and up and our left just comes over and lays on top so the right side is down all right um and we're going to sew so here's what it looks like we're going to sew from this top corner down to this bottom corner. You can draw a line with the marker if you feel more comfortable, but we're sewing from here down to here. And before you cut anything off, you're gonna double check that there's no wrinkles in it, that it's not twisted, and that you not don't have too much fabric. All right, so I'm gonna go to the machine. I'm gonna sew this really quick. So we just went to the machine and we sewed. Again, our right hand side is right is up, right side up and up. Our left hand side came over and it's right side down. And we sewed from this top corner here down to this corner here. And hopefully you can see my stitches there. We're going to trim this eventually, but not right away. First, you're going to take it and you're going to flip it. And you're going to make sure that nothing is twisted because sometimes it comes apart and it's twisted like this. If it does, it's okay. Take out your stitches, sew it again. You probably got something befuddled a little bit when you're there. And we're going to make sure that this fits nice and smooth here, that there's no extra humps or um, extra wrinkles or whatever. We look pretty good, all right? It's laying smooth. We don't, we're not twisted. So now we're going to just open that back up again. We're going to cut this with about a quarter inch seam allowance that we're going to leave in there. Some people trim this right now, um, or press it, I mean. Um, I'm not going to press it. I just finger press it kind of as it goes. So now we're going to take this back over to the machine and you're going to finish stitching this down from here to here. And then you're all done sewing it to the first side. Okay, so we finished sewing our last section there where we over where we joined our ends together and it looks great. Now, usually what I will do, and you don't have to, but it does sometimes help to make everything go nicely together. I will take it and press it out with an iron 
It usually helps it to lay a little bit flatter, um, but for right now, I will do that later. I just want to show you here. So when we get to our corners, um, here's our 90 degree angle. So when you flip that to the other side here, we have this perfect miter corner that shows up. Um, let me get closer there so you can see it. There's our 90 degree angle. And here is our 135 degree angle. And then what you'll do is you'll just flip it over, make sure you're covering up your seam line, and you'll hand stitch that down. Or like I said, I'm gonna take this and pin it nicely, and I'm gonna machine stitch it right here in the ditch. And I will sew it with my machine right from the front. Um, and go ahead and do that all around. Or like I said, you can hand sew it down. So there you go, there's how you do 90 degree angles, how you do odd angles of any size, and how to join your ends of your quilt. So you can do any, do the same concept for a regular quilt, for a table topper, you know, the way I joined it, you have to have at least like a 12 inch side um, to do it on. So if you have a smaller project, you can't, you can't join your ends the same way, you have to do more of the overlapping thing. But there you go, hope you enjoyed this binding tutorial.